Welcome to another instructional snippet. This snippet will introduce Net Positive Suction Head, or NPSH. NPSH is routinely incorrectly defined. Its meaning in terms of pump cavitation is also misunderstood. All of this will be covered in this snippet. This snippet does not contain any worked out examples. Please see my other and upcoming instructional snippets for worked out examples. I hope you enjoy it. Before we define net positive suction head, let's review total pressure head. Total pressure head consists of three head terms. The static pressure head, the velocity head, and the elevation head. Also note that at the defined datum, the point where Z is equal to zero, the total pressure head is the same as the stagnation pressure head or just a stagnation head. Okay, let's define net positive suction head. Net positive suction head is defined as the absolute stagnation pressure head at the pump suction minus the vapor pressure head. It is important to stress that we use absolute pressure for NPSH calculations. Vapor pressure is also an absolute pressure. You will sometimes see NPSH defined as the absolute total pressure head at the pump suction minus the vapor pressure head. These two definitions are equivalent. The datum is defined at the pump suction, so the elevation Z at that point is equal to zero. At the datum, the absolute total pressure head is the same as the absolute stagnation pressure head. Unfortunately, I have encountered several references that incorrectly define net positive suction head. Instead of correctly using the absolute stagnation or absolute total pressure at the pump suction, they use the absolute static pressure. This is incorrect. The velocity head term may be small, but it's part of the net positive suction head equation. My time as a consultant in the commercial nuclear energy industry, I did a lot of NPSH calculations. If a calculation showed that a vital pump did not meet minimum NPSH requirements, the plant would have to shut down and enact an often expensive remedy. The difference between passing and failing is sometimes less than a velocity head. Let's shift focus a bit and introduce and discuss net positive suction head available versus net positive suction head required. Net positive suction head required comes from the manufacturer. Typically it is a curve plotted along with the pump head flow curve. Net positive suction head available is specific to the system for the installed pump. Big picture, we want to make sure that the net positive suction head available is greater than or equal to net positive suction head required. Next, let's discuss a misconception I often encounter. That is, if net positive suction head available is equal to or exceeds net positive suction head required, then cavitation is prevented. This is incorrect and will become clear as we review how net positive suction head required is determined. Let's look at a typical test rig used by a manufacturer to determine net positive suction head required. Before we do, let's review the definition of pump head. The equation is provided here. It is important to note that it is defined based on the differential pressure across the pump. As long as a pump has sufficient net positive suction head to prevent cavitation, then the pump head will be constant. Understanding this is important to understand how net positive suction head required is determined. Now let's look at the test rig. A tank provides net positive suction head to the pump being tested. All piping losses, etc. are known, so the absolute stagnation pressure is known at the pump suction. A series of tests are conducted. A flow control valve maintains the same flow for each test. Each consecutive test has a lower water level in the tank. The pump head is measured for each test. A decrease in pump head indicates sufficient cavitation to degrade pump performance. Let's review the process. First, we set the desired flow with the flow control valve. Then, we lower the level in the tank in increments and measure pump head. We continue until cavitation starts to impact the pump head. The point where cavitation results in a 3% decrease in pump head is used to define net positive suction head required. Let's look at the process with the two plots provided here. The top chart plots the water level in the suction tank. The bottom chart plots the pump head. Notice that the pump head is constant for the first eight tests, but then starts to drop off. Once pump head has decreased 3% from its initial value, that point is used to define net positive suction head required. Keep in mind that if you design a system where net positive suction head available is just equal 
to net positive suction head required, the pump will operate with sufficient cavitation to decrease the pump head by 3%. That type of design guarantees cavitation. Does this damage the pump? Research results are mixed. I recommend reading Hydraulics of Pipelines, Pumps, Valves, Cavitation and Transients by Tullus. I feel remiss to have not actually calculated net positive suction head available in an example. Please see my other and future snippets for actual examples. I hope you found this instructional snippet informative. If so, please like and subscribe. And have a great day.